this. All right, we're talking today about solving inequalities using multiplication or division. And there, there's two types of equations to solve a multiplication inequality. What property should we use? The division property of inequality. Okay, what is that division property of inequality? I wrote this down. Can anyone explain this to me? Uh, at least the first line. Who can explain that first line to me right here? Okay, John, what does this mean? If blah, 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 blah. Um, so it's saying um, a greater number divided by, like, so let's just put in a number. So let's mm -hmm. put two. So it's saying two divided by one is greater than one divided by one. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you, like, just divide something by both sides, Very good. the bigger one is, like, going to come out. Still bigger? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what it's saying. If you have an inequality, and I can substitute this with less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, it doesn't matter the inequality. But if I have an inequality and I do what to both sides? Divide them both by the same number. Don't I get the same inequality symbol? Yeah. Okay, and then I wrote something under here which is super important to this lesson. When that number I divided both sides by is positive. positive. Now watch the next note. If, and I almost wrote the same thing here, A is greater than B, right? Then A divided by C is, what did I put here? Less than B divided by C. What happened to the inequality sign? It was greater than, and then it became less than. Does anyone know why? Yes, ma'am? Um, because it's a negative. Yeah, I divided both sides by A negative value and we'll explain why that even happens in just a moment so write that down and that's the division property of inequality which is not the same as the division property of equality do you guys notice i'm trying to use my words carefully here what are inequalities statements that have inequality symbols good which are the ones you guys were going to list what are equations or equalities they only have the equal sign, okay? So they're a little bit different because of this C being negative, possibly. Okay, so get that down. Let's go ahead and solve this first one here. Uh, Michael, what kind of inequality is this? What kind of inequality? It's a multiplication inequality, but what property do you use? Division. Division, yeah, yeah. It's a multiplication. How do I know it's a multiplication inequality? Because what's happening to B? It's being Multiply. multiplied. So now how do I solve a multiplication property of equality? Good. I'm going to divide both sides by 52. And we're just going to um, review some concepts. Now, 52B divided by 52 is just B. And then do I switch the inequality symbol? Why not? I thought that's what we just talked about above. Yeah, did I divide both sides by a negative? No, so I do not switch the inequality symbol. And then here, guys, I'm not going to make you divide this out. It's uh, 4.52, and that's rounded because it goes on. Your homework will not have those kind of problems. But here, the answer is not B is greater than or equal to 4.52. I want to give this problem some context. So look at the top of page 74. This is where I got this problem. Who can read that first paragraph where it says the senior class? Sarah? The senior class is going on the field trip. A school bus is full of 52 passengers, and there are at least 235 teachers and students going on the trip. What is the minimum number of buses needed? Okay, you get the context here. We have a bunch of students and teachers. We have buses that can hold how many per? 52. And we're asking, what is the minimum number that I need to take uh, as far as buses. So B is the number of buses. How many students and teachers can the bus take each? 52. And then it says I need to have room for at least, that's the at least symbol, 235 people. Why is that the at least symbol? I thought at least would be less than or equal to. What does at least mean? I think Sarah knows. Oh, no. Sorry, Mr. President. Uh, so what is the uh, at least, why is it at least greater than or equal to, not less than or equal to? Yes. Uh, is Sarah the only one who knows this? 
That's okay. Y is at least greater than or equal to. I thought it would be less than or equal to. Go ahead. Um, because when it's at least, it's like the bare minimum. You need to have that. Or, or above. Yeah, yeah. You need to have room for at least 235 people or above that because there may be more. Okay, but the answer isn't 4.52. Why is it not? Wait, I need more. Uh, I need at least 4.52 buses. Mackenzie? You have to have the whole bus. Oh. You just cut it in half. You just cut it in half, yeah. it works. Uh, what would be my answer then? If it's not 4.52, it'd be, five. Alyssa? Five. five. I need to have at least five buses. So, I mean, B needs to be greater than or equal to five. So, uh, I think we asked this question. I know John has been asking this. Remember, what would set builder normally be? Wouldn't it be this for answer? But can B technically be any number? No. Can it be 4.52? No. no. Can it be a decimal then? No. Can it be a fraction? No. Can it be a negative number? No. It's got to be a positive integer. So technically, I would say B is a positive integer such that B is greater than or equal to 5. That's one example why I need to change that later on, but not right now. You just leave it like that for now. We're good. Okay, let's move on. Let's go ahead and work this one out here. Solve negative 7.3n is greater than 365. Rachel, what kind of inequality is this? Multiplication. Kind. Multiplication inequality. Matt, how do you solve multiplication inequalities? All right, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7.3. Both sides by negative 7.3. Murphy? When I divide both sides by negative 7.3, what happened automatically? Something happened instantly. Uh, it changed to less than. Became less than. Automatically. Good. So I got n is less than. And then I do uh, divide this one out. And this one will divide evenly. But be careful here. 365 divided by 7.3. Move the decimal. Move it here. My decimal point's right here. This is where you got to be careful. Right here. You guys okay with where I move my decimal? Okay, because I don't. If I put it in the wrong spot, I get a wrong answer. 73 goes into 36, no times. 365. 75. Five times. What's my answer? 50. Negative. Okay, I got negative. I'm in agreement with negative. Is it 50 or 5 or 0.5? Which one is it? It's not all of them. They're not all the same. Don't be shy. Okay, fine. I'm going to make you say it. Emma Grace. 50. Yes, negative 50 because of this zero right here that has to be filled in. Negative 50. Good. All right, what's that builder? N is any number such that N is less than negative 50. And um, somebody give me interval notation. Davis. That's right. Yes. Think about it before saying it or writing it. Interval. It would be uh, parentheses negative Okay, good. So parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, negative 50, comma. All right, parenthesis, excuse me. What did I put that there? Uh, graph, Y. I got negative 50 right here, negative 49, negative 51. What kind of circle goes on negative 50? Open. Open. Uh, Marissa, where does the line go? It is going to the left. Good, to the left. So that would be, those would be all three answers. You guys okay with that? You guys remember set builder, kind of? Do you guys remember interval? Do you guys remember how to graph? Okay, the graphing, I hope, is the easiest one because you guys have done that so many times. Set builder should be the next easiest because you have, you just put the N as such that, and then interval is probably the toughest one. But by the third, how many times, how many lessons have we dealt with this? Three lessons now. I hope it's like, okay, I get it. I just need some time, and then I can get it. Yes, ma'am? I'm so kind of confused on why you're changing the sign. 
Oh, for the inequality? Yeah. The reason... When yes, when I divide by a negative... Re the reason that happens is, okay, you see how this is negative, then that's positive, like at the beginning. When you divide both sides by a negative, what happens to the sign here? It changes, right? It changes to positive now, and then this changes to negative. So if the signs didn't change, it makes sense. You just divided, the numbers got smaller, but this one's bigger, that one's smaller. But when you change the signs, you actually say the opposite of this and the opposite of that. So that's really why you have to change it, because you're talking now about opposites. So it switches the sign. Mm -hmm. Good question. All right, let's move on here. Oh my, write this down. <laughs> this is the last set of uh, large notes. There's a lot of English and math. I don't know. I'm kind of confused about that. Sorry about that. Then, that first then, I had to fill it in because I didn't put in the N at the beginning. Okay, as you're writing this down, I'm going to have somebody explain it to me. Um, so please write it down with some thought. I mean, I can. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, because... Um, yeah, I'll probably do both. Okay, someone explained to me I have two if-then statements. So what's what do they mean? Nick? What does this first one mean? Go ahead. You're just multiplying by the same thing. Great. When C is positive. positive. Okay, someone explain the bottom one. Michael? It's on, um, like A is, uh, when B is greater than A, it's saying like A times C is greater than B times C because it, when C is negative. Because if you do that, it's making A uh, negative and B positive. Yes, yeah, so switching those signs. Opposite. It's saying the opposite of A is greater than B. Opposite of B. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. So we're talking about opposites now. So we have to switch that inequality. That was not by accident. So please make sure you get that. All right, let's work on a problem here. Okay, what kind of inequality is this? Um, Mackenzie, what kind of inequality? Is it a multiplication inequality? Uh, okay, why is it a division one? Because you have x over 12. Yeah, because the original inequality have division. What solves a division inequality? Murphy, what solves the division inequality? So this is a division inequality. What solves it? What will help me to solve it? Using multiplication. multiplication. Yeah, I'm going to multiply Caroline both sides by? By 12. Multiply by 12. Okay. Alyssa, when I multiply both sides by 12, uh, what, do I, what am I left with here? Yeah, 180, good. So what's the symbol? X is... Whoa, 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 whoa. Guys, didn't we just talk about switching the direction? Oh, yeah. If you multiply both sides by a positive, do you switch the inequality? No, don't do it. And we're talking about both sides. So we're not talking about um, just one side by a negative. All right, set builder. Who has set builder for me? Why? X is any 
right, great. Um, Betsy, give me interval, please. That's okay. Try it. Okay. Um. The infinity. No. So think of your graph. Like you have what kind of circle on 180? Oh. Okay. So just think of the graph. You. Okay. And let me help you out, because this will help us on the other part. What kind of circle goes on 180? Close. Close. All right. Line going to the. If it's greater than, right. to the right. Okay, so this is your graph. Okay, so we start with the, in this case, we start with the number. What kind of symbol should I give with 180? Bracket. Yeah, why bracket? Someone help out with why bracket? Yep. Yeah, because it's greater than or equal to. So I got 180, comma, um, Jensen. Yes, why parenthesis? John? Because there's always a parenthesis after infinity sign. Yeah. It goes on. Goes on in that direction. Good. You don't close it off in infinity. Okay, and then the graph, which we got already, was 180, 181, 179. We said it was a closed circle, line going to the right. How many of you are comfortable doing the graph? Like you could do a graph. Good, the graph is something we've done for a while. How many of you are getting comfortable or very comfortable with set builder? Really all you do is put that little line and then the X or the whatever variable. And then how many of you are getting to or already comfortable with interval? Okay, we're getting there. I'm not saying it's perfect. By the way, Mr. A has to think about it. I sit there and like bracket, blah, blah. I don't just, just spit it out because it's not always correct the first time around. Okay, oh my. Oops. Just when you thought, oh, Mr. A, we got this. Uh, I'm going to throw one problem like this to you. Could you also say, so like the first thing, could you also say um, negative y? Is that like yeah, yeah, and actually that was the problem. I put the negative 1 to help, oh, okay. but yeah, you could just say negative y. Okay, four steps to success on inequalities, which are very similar to equations. First step. Get rid of parentheses. Are there any parentheses? Mm -hmm. No. So we're done with step number one. Step two, um, get any like terms on either side, side and combine them. Are there any like terms on either side? Yeah. Yes. Right here and right here. They are like terms. They both have a Y. But how do I combine negative one and negative one fifth? Couldn't you just say negative one and one fifth? Yeah, you can say negative one and one fifth y and then is less than 30. Okay, so you just combine them. Yeah, here's what, what she did and what you could do here. Okay, here's the problem. And is it a negative 1 minus 1 fifth? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, negative 1 plus negative 1 fifth. Stay, change, opposite. And so now we make it an addition problem, so it's negative 1 and 1 fifth. Uh, did someone else have their hand? Yep, Jensen. Uh, you could change it to Negative six fifths y is less than 30. Okay, uh, John, what kind of inequality is this? This is a multiplication. It's a multiplication inequality. Marissa, what undoes normally a multiplication inequality? Division. Division. But in this case, just like last chapter, you can also do what? <laughs> Nick? Of what number? Yes, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 6 fifths, which is negative 5, 6. Am I allowed to do that? Am I allowed to multiply um, both sides by a negative by the reciprocal? Yeah, I'm allowed to do all that. Okay, here, this is what happens. What's a negative times a negative? Positive. So the signs are done. Uh, 5, 6 times 6 fifths. 1y, or just y. Anything else here, Emma Grace? What do I do? So I got y, what's my symbol? 
Why greater than? I multiply both sides by a negative, so it has to be greater than. I have to switch it. And then here, if you're confused what to do, just put 30 over 1. Um, sorry, this was a negative at first. And then I said, what's a negative times a negative? That's how it turned into a positive. But uh, right here, can I cancel anything out? 1, 5, oh, wow, 5, 1, okay. And then what do I get? Negative 25. Set builder, Sarah. Um, why such that y is greater than um, 25? Okay, uh, Mackenzie, interval. Um, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, what would it be? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that <laughs> comment. Um, which way is that line going? It's going to the right. So what kind of infinity? Positive. Good, positive infinity. And brace, or excuse me, parentheses for both. Yes, sir. So what one like? So I did decimal way. And I oh, did the same thing. good. Which one would be easier? Like um, I would say it really depends on you. If you wanted to work at it as a decimal, you're more than welcome to do that. But if it were, like if you got 20, negative 25.25, let's say, then you need to write it as a mixed number or a improper fraction because it started as a fraction. But that's okay. I, I like the fractional way, but you can do decimal. Graph. Rachel, graph. Sorry. No, you're good, Rachel. I'm sorry. Rachel, I got distracted. Go ahead. Good. Good, good. Right. Okay, good. You guys okay with that? Now. On these problems, you get these answers great, you, you're comfortable with it, but can you know if your answers are right or wrong? Is it possible? Yeah, yeah. yeah you can plug it. We're not going to do it on this one, but... Okay, this was not the hardest problem. This is. <laughs> this is going to break a lot of hearts this morning. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. Mr. A is weird. Uh, no, I want you guys to, what I did with the last class, I asked, all right, what would you do? And I got like a lot of different ways of doing it, which is good. Do it the way you're going to, you believe is the correct way, but then I'll help you to know whether it's correct or not, no matter what way you went. So what I do is this. I look at my variable, and I'm like, okay, what's happening to the variable? It's being divided by 11. So how do I undo that division by 11? You can multiply by 11. That's probably a good step. But is the variable by itself when you divide, excuse me, is the variable by itself when you multiply both sides by 11? No. There's something with it still. And that's the thing I want to get rid of. Yes. You are? Yep. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. In the last class, there are five ways to work this out. Five. 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 And that's not all of them, because there are far others. Yes, ma'am? So, wait. Can you put the negative x? When you put it to the other side, would that make it positive Yes. Yeah, do interval, set builder, and graph. Do all three, please. Now, whatever your answer is, if you have a graph, I want you to pick one number that should be a part of your solution, like one number that is shaded, and see if it fits into the original. If it fits, great. If it doesn't fit, something was wrong. And you don't have to go, you don't have to make it difficult. Just put a number in there. 
see if it works out. Yeah, I would suggest um, multiples of 11. Good. Multiples of 11 will work well. All right, how many of you got, whatever way you did, you got this. Okay, but this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Is that allowed? Whoa, 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 whoa. Mr. A switched the sign how many times? 47. <laughs> uh, I went from greater than to less than, then less than to greater than. Which one's correct? Okay, can I tell you? Yes, there are two reasons why you switch the sign. The first reason is this. Whenever you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, what happens to that sign? Switch. It must switch. Okay, that's where it switched right here. That's why I got less than or equal to. Okay, but why did I switch it again? This is the second reason you're allowed to switch it. Caroline? Okay. No, go ahead. Um, well, I was going to say because you, brought, you want the variable in front. I like the variable in front. But that's not a really good reason. No, it's not a bad reason. In fact, oh my. In fact, um, that's how we see it a lot of times, so that's fine to do. Yeah. Am I allowed to switch these two sides around? Of course I am. That's the reflexive property. But when I switch that around, I have to make sure it still reflects that original inequality. So, set builder, Marissa. Um, okay. So, x is any number such that x is greater than or equal to 11. Sounds good. Jensen. Interval. Um, the, uh, 11, or oh, sorry, uh, bracket. Okay, bracket, 11. Uh, and the infinity sign. Yeah, the infinity sign. Good, all right. I think some of you asked on Friday, Mr. Ray, are you always going to have an infinity sign? And the answer to that is no. Soon, we will not have infinity signs. Soon. It's coming. In fact, Did you put the variable? I'm looking at something back there. It should catch your attention. I'm going to quit. You, okay, hold on. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to draw your attention. What, what do we have on Thursday here in this class? Uh, quiz. The quiz will not have a non-infinity sign problem. So you're going to have infinity signs. After the quiz, and therefore for the test, you're going to have, um, sometimes you have, 11 and 3, 11 and 1,000. And then it depends on the type of circle you have there. But you can have what we call compound inequalities. Yes, ma'am, but not yet. What if you're wrong find it like inter for interval notation to the negative infinity infinity? Because what way is negative infinity going? It's so, but that's the way it's, yeah. Like it was written here? Is that what you're saying? Is this because of... That's okay. Um, all right. Michael, what kind of circle on 11? Closed. Closed. Which way should the line go, Nick? Uh, should go to the right. To the right. Even if you're looking at this one, it should still go to the right because X is greater than or equal to 11. Yes, ma'am? Okay. So for this problem, I solved it a little bit differently. Awesome. Uh, I moved the negative to the 11, so I did negative 1 is greater than or equal to x over negative 11. <laughs> Keep going. And then I, I got multiplied it. Multiplied by negative 11 on each side. Would that work for every problem? Because I still got the same answer. I think it would. Right? Maybe. Can you visualize it? I do. I, okay. Yes, you can. I think you and Caroline said, Mr. Ray, can you move that negative sign down here? Of course you can, because it is there if you wanted to, so it's positive x over negative 11. Yes, that's fine. Wait, did I say that was the hardest problem? Yeah. Oops. Last problem of the day. No, this isn't too bad. I hope you guys can get it. Do it on your own, please. Get me all three. Yes, set builder, interval, and graph. Hmm? That's not it. Josh. 
Mr. A's four steps to success on inequalities. Get rid of parentheses. Add like terms on either side. Get the variable to one side or the other. And then solve for the variable. Um, Mr. A's four steps of success are too much for this problem, I think. But what about tomorrow? When you get your answer, pick one number that should be a part of that solution and one number that should not and test it. See if it works or not. It doesn't work, depending on which one you picked. And even if zero was not in the solution, you know that zero could be in the non-solution part. So you check out zero and see if it doesn't work. And that helps you check. So zero is always a good number. Oh. <laughs> what happens to that inequality sign? Why? Ouch. That was too quick. And then I'm going to flip it again just for good measure and make sure I get the sign correctly. Just. Okay. I'll get Emma Grace to do the interval, and then I'll get Sarah to give me the graph, and then I'm going to ask two others to check. To tell me how to check. So Emma Grace, go ahead. Would you do a bracket? Bracket um, would be for a, grade, a lesson or equal to. I was trying to see. Okay, now make sure you know which way this graph is going. Go ahead. Negative infinity. Yeah, so that's your interval notation. And then, uh, Sarah, go ahead and give me the graph. So I just did one, two, and three, and then I had an open circle on two, line going to the left. Okay, how many of you got this for your solution? Okay, who checked the number to see if it was part of it? Jensen, what number did you pick? I used three. Okay, that's not it. Oh, yeah, we still have th two minutes. All right. Um, you pick three, and three should not work, right? Is that what you're saying? Okay, I'm going to pick both of those. I'm going to pick three. Three should not work, right? And one should work. So three. What's negative eight times three? Negative 24. What's negative two times three? What's negative 24 plus negative six? All right, I got negative 30 here. Is negative 20 less than negative 30? No, that's why negative 3 doesn't work. Let's check 1. Uh, what's negative 8 times 1? What's negative 2 times 1? Is negative 20 less than negative 10? Yeah. It works. Does 2 work? No. Yeah, I'll get negative 20 and negative 20. Is negative 20 less than negative 20? No, that's why we put an open circle on two because it's not included. Do you remember that from the first lesson? Not included. And if it's shaded, shaded in, what does that mean? Included. Yeah, so that's why we put those circles. All right. Uh, bracket means included. Yeah, parentheses means not included. And that's there's a little way of thinking of it for the negative infinity, positive infinity. All right, listen up carefully what we're doing today. Uh, this afternoon, you'll come back, you'll get your test back, you'll get your, uh, sorry, we'll get the homework started, and then we're going to do IXL competitions versus one another. Oh. Did we do good on the test? Uh, what's your opinion of good? Oh, look what time it is. It's time to go. Put your books away. Hmm? Do I ever what? 